Hi, I'm Calivan. As the last few hours of the year fall by the wayside, I thought it might be nice to look at what strategy has to offer us in 2024. Now, this isn't necessarily a list of the 10 most unmissable titles of the year, but these are the games that interest me personally and I think will be worth a look. There are of course loads of other strategy games coming out next year that I'm not keyed up on. So if you know of something that looks particularly spicy, then let me know in the comments. Let's kick this off with something we've already covered recently on the channel, Stargate Timekeepers. Timekeepers is a real-time tactics game set in the Stargate universe with a focus on stealth. It's scheduled for release on the 23rd of January, and there's already a free demo available on Steam if you want to try out the first mission before you commit to a purchase. I did take a look at it myself and I enjoyed guiding a couple of operatives around crashed ships and debris of the Battle of Antarctica for a while. There seem to be a multitude of ways to approach each challenge and I find the variety of abilities available and ways to employ them quite satisfying. There does seem to be some degree of competency around the game itself. Everything looked good, felt smooth and did what I was expecting it to do. And the tutorial elements of the first mission didn't detract from the gameplay too much. I didn't make the connection until someone pointed it out in the comments of a previous video, but it's essentially a Stargate theme take on one of the old Commandos games from the late 90s, which is a great segue as we look at our next game, Commandos Origins. Origins is a new game in the Commandos series from the same studio that did the recent HD remasters of Commandos 2 and 3. However, I'm not sure if this is a blessing or a curse. Those remastered were reportedly riddled with bugs and left a lot to be desired, but Hopefully the developers have learnt from their mistakes and their first new game in the franchise won't disappoint us. Calypso certainly have a lot of experience to draw from. They have had plenty of previous success with games like Tropico, so let's hope they treat the game with the reverence the series deserves and deliver us a quality product. Unfortunately, there's nothing for us to play at this stage. No gameplay trailer and no release date more specific than 2024, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens with this one. What does have a specific release date is Homeworld 3, currently scheduled for the 8th of March. If you know and love the Homeworld series as I do, you'll be itching to try out this new release. And if the series is new to you and you want to learn a little more, then I've got a video for that. I'll put a link in the description. There is only so much we can really say at this point. The trailer looks good and Gearbox have got a good track record with previous releases. Most notably in this case, they gave us the remastered versions of Homeworld 1 and 2, which were excellent. So. They at least have some serious credentials. The only thing I'm a little bit disappointed to see is the inclusion of a DLC season pass in the day one release package. I hate this sort of monetization and I feel that it's really unfair to dangle this sort of thing in front of fans before they even know what's included. I think I'll adopt my usual strategy with this release and wait a few days for the initial reviews to roll in before committing anything. If everything looks very positive then I'll pick it up. If not, I'll probably wait for a little while longer for a slew of fixes or a later sale. Next up we have Industrial Annihilation, a sequel to 2014's Planetary Annihilation. Normally I wouldn't be that interested in another Total Annihilation style of game as I'm still very much into Beyond All Reason, but this one promises to be a little different. The promo description claims to include a deep level of factory management which I had to admit piqued my interest. The trailer makes it look like a fusion between an RTS and something like Factorio, which might just hit the spot for those looking for a very macro-oriented experience. Whenever I'm discussing RTS, I always hear comments from people looking for something with less focus on micro, and perhaps this is the niche in the market that Industrial Annihilation hopes to fill. It's currently marketed as coming into early access in the second quarter of 2024, and the pre-order price tag of $30 seems very reasonable. Now, it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention Stormgate. Chances are you've heard plenty about this already, so I won't go into too much detail, but the short version is that a load of people that worked on Blizzard's craft games have set up their own studio and are working on a new RTS. Their very clear intention is to create a replacement for StarCraft 2 and WarCraft 3 by taking what made those games great and turning it into a modern RTS with support for single player, co-op and versus gameplay. There is a little bit of alpha footage available on YouTube if you want to look it up. And I personally recommend checking out Grubby's channel, who's had permission to show some of the closed beta gameplay and it looks very interesting. Like many others, I'm pretty excited for Stormgate. 
What I've seen so far looks very promising, and although there isn't an official release date yet, I expect to see some sort of open beta or early access before the end of 2024. There's a lot of hype around this game, but I think it's well deserved, and if you're a fan of StarCraft then this is definitely one to look out for. If you preferred the Command & Conquer style of games, then you're in luck, as our next pick seems to have that covered. Tempest Rising is being touted as the spiritual successor to Command & Conquer, and from the little bit that I've played myself, I think that's a pretty fair description. It has the look and feel of a modern Tiberium Dawn or Tiberium Sun game, with a similar style of base building, unit production and resource collection. They have a free demo that I think you can find on the Steam Store or on their own website, so if this is your sort of thing then I urge you to download it and give it a go. You can play through the first mission of each of the two campaigns, and I think it serves its purpose well and gives you a good feel for what the final game will be like. I've done a bit of a deeper dive in a previous video, so if you want to learn more then I suggest giving that a look. I'll put a link in the description. I've got not much to say about the next game because honestly I can't really figure out what it is, but something about it interests me. It's called Neverdark and it describes itself as a real-time simulation strategy game. The plot's pretty simple. There's been a global blackout, all communication has gone down, there's no more internet, society has collapsed, and it's our job to rebuild it. Each map or scenario seems to take place in a different real world city, and you have to repurpose the existing structures and layout to create your new society, while defending it from others who try to seize power. I'm hoping to see a level in the reproduction London where I can use the Houses of Parliament as a shopping mall, or maybe the Science Museum as an R&D centre. We'll probably have to wait until the 28th of June to find out what the real deal is here, but hopefully we'll get some gameplay footage a bit sooner than that. It's been developed by independent studio Slytherin, who generally make some quite competent games, so I'll be interested to see what they come up with this time. Now moving on, I'm a huge fan of Stellaris, so when I learned the Paradox have a new title up their sleeve for 2024, I was immediately interested. It's called Star Miner and it looks gorgeous, but how does it play? Well, paradox of this to say. Design and build an interstellar mining fleet to strip space of its invaluable minerals and sell them for a tidy profit. But beware, your greed will attract the alien. Use warships and defense platforms to protect your fleet at all costs, in real space, in real time. Sounds a bit interesting, right? It looks to be a single player focused experience, and the footage I've seen really reminds me of the times I used to waste away the hours mining in EVE Online. Perhaps that's the target market, the people who love the look and feel of EVE's industrial base but without having to deal with all those pesky other players. Unfortunately the release date is no more specific than 2024, so we'll just have to see what happens, but I think there'll be some sort of early access release before the final product is available. Now for something for fans of turn-based. Classified France 44 is a new XCOM alike from Team 17, which is a publisher I've not thought about for many years. They are most famously known for the Worms franchise, and I was very pleased to learn that they are still around and have been making games that I've been totally unaware of ever since. The game looks pretty fun, and they seem to have genuinely tried to bring something new to the genre, including a morale system that means even missed shots have an effect on the gameplay rather than just being something that made you fling your mouse across the room in disgust at. I love the World War II setting, so it gets a big check mark from me in that regard, and there seems to be plenty of between mission strategy to be had in the training, customization, and outfitting of your team. The game is scheduled for release sometime in 2024, but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll have to wait that long. There's a demo available on Steam right now, something I'll be checking out myself in the very near future. The last game on my list is a little different, and I've included it on the list as I've found myself fascinated by the concept. Planet X16 is an RTS developed by a YouTuber by the name of the 8-Bit Guy. It's a fully featured RTS created entirely for an 8-Bit computer, the sort of systems that were available in the 80s. The graphics, gameplay and the features that he's managed to include are absolutely overwhelming when you consider the limitations of the technology. We're talking about machines that had something in the region of an 8 MHz processor and 512 kilobytes of RAM. It's designed to run on a Commander X16, which I think is best described as a sort of up-to-date version of the Commodore 64 created using modern components. However, 
If you love the look and feel of retro games, then you'll be excited to learn that there's an emulated Steam release available from the 1st of January. If, like me, you find this whole concept fascinating, then I recommend heading over to the 8-Bit Guy's channel and taking a look at his video. I'll link it down in the description. He goes over the whole project and its creation in great detail and it's really worth a watch. And there you go, some strategy games to look out for in 2024. Which of these look the most interesting to you? Or maybe you've got something even better that I've totally missed? Let me know in a comment below. I'll be talking about each of these games in more detail once they are out, so if you want to keep up with the developments then subscribe to my channel. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video please leave me a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the new year.